Mr. Wood, if you would uh, state your name for the records, and you have 10 minutes. I had a, a brilliant overhead uh, presentation put together for you, but it seems that technology always gets in the way. Uh, my name is Dr. Brian Wood. I'm a civil engineer with uh, significant project experience. I teach structures and project management at SIAS. Just as a point of interest, I raised four children in Moose Jaw, uh, all of whom have left for career opportunities elsewhere, so I'm very well aware of the whole question of trying to keep people here. And I'm very supportive in building sports facilities in Moose Jaw, including a rink, uh, curling rinks, etc. Uh, but I have significant problems with the whole process that's taken place, and uh, those would have been wonderful overhead. If I could review my view of this, we've had a year of studies, if so called, at a cost of 150,000, possibly. No real objective set right from the beginning. An obvious, I love this uh, statement, I wondered about it, an obvious hidden agenda throughout. No real full preliminary designs or studies done, real full is what I'm saying. Secret meetings. No real community input to this process, as far as I'm concerned. A confidential report that has nobody's name on it. I, I looked through the report itself and couldn't find anybody that was willing to actually put their name on the report that went to you. Constant bullying. I'm sorry to say this, but people saying, if we don't do this, the warriors leave. If you don't do this, I'm not going to spend $40 million. If you don't do this, I'm not going to give money towards the multiplex. Uh, my interest in this came two years ago when a motion went to council to build a multiplex of the type that was suggested in uh, Chilliwack at the Civic Center. Six to one, the vote went through on that. And at next council, I've never seen so much bullying in my life. People coming to council from a certain area to bully council into changing their minds. And there's no need to remind you we'd be getting ready to open it next fall if that hadn't happened. A quick vote was taking place. I didn't even get to look at this before the vote was taking place because people were stopped at the door trying to get in here and couldn't get a hold of these reports. And if you don't think so, there's an unsatisfied community out there. I realize straw polls aren't worth very much, but 80 somewhat percent of people dissatisfied with council's actions on this matter. In my analysis of the steering committee's report, and I do this fairly constantly, I thought I'd hold this up. The number of red marks on that report, uh, that's what I do for a living. Uh, I have given you what I believe are some errors in omission. First of all, a complete lack of risk assessment. There was no risk assessment done in this. And nowadays, if you're doing a project of $60 million and you don't do a risk assessment, beware. A failure to realistically evaluate the economic impact in the community. And I'll show you an example of that. A failure for it to deal with geotechnical and environmental construction problems downtown. And that's very apparent. A failure to deal with the downtown parking problems in spite of what the actual reports that came to that committee said, a failure to recognize design and construction differences among sites. Construction is not a general thing, it's site specific. And there are very big differences between these. The, the assessment uh, of matrix and evaluation, as far as I was concerned, was incredible. I, I, I don't know where you got, but it was very obvious to me it was set up to get one result. I'm sorry to be giving my opinion on this, but that's, that's it. A complete lack of consultation. I'm sorry, I don't believe the consultation that took place before the vote was the type of consultation needed. And I'll point out to you that Medicine Hat, having hired a consultant, having brought in a recommendation, the first thing that they did after the recommendation came in was to ask the community what they thought. Nobody asked the community what they thought of this report. I'm sorry. The incomplete designs and cost estimates. 
Having three cost of estimates that are order of magnitude dot cost estimates doesn't get you a better answer. They all have the same relative error. Financial analysis that doesn't deal with concrete facts, well, maybe we can sell this. Maybe we can do that. Maybe I can win the lottery. Maybe doesn't cut it when you're doing $60 million projects. And as far as I'm concerned, due diligence not existed. And I know people were saying we've done our due diligence. If that's due diligence, uh, I wonder. What's a risk assessment? Look at some of the negative impacts on the adjacent businesses, and I'll show you something about that in a minute. Assess the effects on the warriors and their sustainability. Mr. Chow, I, you're here, you're not here, I'm sorry, you represent the warriors, but I would think the warriors would be very concerned on the impact on their attendance, possibly, of this building, and I'll show you a couple examples. Prospects for real income beyond that, I'll show you. And the whole question of cost overruns. Whoops, I always go too fast. Just to give you a really good example, and if I stopped here, it wouldn't be enough. The steering committee said in the new Stadia business plan, in the business plan prepared by new Stadia consultants, it was projected that the multiplex will, will host 120 to 150 events per year. I thought that was really wild. So I went into the new stadium report that was quoted by the group. New multiplex facilities typically schedule 120 to 150 events per year, depending on location, community support, which is often based on demographics, entertainment options, and disposable income. Further down, New Stadia has projected only 12 concerts and family shows per year in the business plan. Now is that just because somebody couldn't read? Or is that what uh, often is called uh, strategic manipulation of the facts? Because that's a big difference. That was one of the number one reasons we're talking about building uh, downtown was because of the economic impact. Real economic studies have shown, and I, I'm, I have a PhD in engineering, and I do research, have shown that there is little or no impact of downtown arenas on economic development. In fact, it's more often negative. 